Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new tutorial series. In this series, I'm going to be showing you how to use the curses module. Now the curses module allows us to take control of our terminal. Doesn't matter what operating system we're on, Mac, Linux, Windows, it will work for all of them and actually style it, update it, refresh it and do all kinds of awesome stuff. So I'll show you a demo in a second of what curses can do. But essentially, when you're using regular Python, you're limited to printing stuff out and then getting input. And what that means is that if the user types something in, you need to print an entirely new line to actually respond to that input. You can't like clear the entire terminal and only have one or two lines in the terminal at a time. You need to keep printing stuff out and you get really ugly output. And it's really difficult to make a good looking kind of terminal application. But with this module right here, you have full control of the terminal so you can clear it. You can get user keystrokes. You can add coloring. You can add styling. You can bold. You can underline. You can change the color of text. You can override previous text. All of the stuff that you would want to be able to do and that you can't usually do, you can do with this module. Anyways, in this series, I'm going to show you all of the different features you need to know about it. For now, though, I want to give you a quick demo of kind of what it's capable of. So what I'm going to do here is just run this script. It's called tutorial.py. And this is actually something that I made in a previous video on this channel that was called the best beginner project or best Python beginner project. In that video, we made a speed test typer. So kind of like calculating your words per minute. This is the finished product right here that you're about to see. So if you want to learn how to build this, you can actually go and watch that video. I'll leave a link to it in the description and put it up on the screen. But the point is we used the curses module in that. And there's actually a ton more stuff that you can do in curses that's not even a part of this project. Anyways, you can see that we've cleared the entire terminal here. So first of all, that's nice. We're not seeing kind of the uh, I guess the working directory that we were in. We're just in a terminal. It looks like an application. And if I hit enter here, it's going to bring up a block of text. Now, what I can actually do is start typing and notice that in live time, it's updating the words per minute. And if I type something wrong, for example, I'm getting red text and I can override text that's already on the screen and kind of make it look like it's highlight. So this is a very simple use case of the curses module. But the idea is that you can do something like this and it's just super, super useful. So notice here we kind of pause now. It says you complete the text, press any key to try again. And if I hit enter here, then it brings me back. It clears the entire terminal, brings me a new block of text, and then I can keep typing and everything's updating in live time on the screen. So if you want to learn how to do this, follow along with this series. Let's go ahead and get into the code. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do here is install the curses module, but you only need to do this if you're on Windows. So if you're on Mac or Linux, it's already installed for you so you can skip this step. So if you're on Windows, what you need to do is open up your command prompt. You can see I have mine open right here and you're just going to type the following command pip install and then Windows hyphen curses like this. Now, I already have this installed, so I'm not going to run it. But once this command is finished, you should just be able to use this module. Now, if this doesn't work for you, try this command python hyphen m pip install windows curses. And if that does not work for you, I will leave a video on the screen and a link in the description that tells you how to fix your pip. Now, this is going to say how to install Pygame. Just follow along with the video. And as soon as I install Pygame, just do windows curses instead. OK, so now that we have this installed, what I'm going to do is go here to sublime text. and I'm going to start writing some code. Now, I'm going to use sublime text for this video. You can use whatever editor you want. VS Code, Notepad++, the default IDLE does not matter. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to import the curses module. I mean, we need to do that when we're going to be using this module. We're also going to say from curses, import, and then wrapper like this. Now, whenever we use the curses module, what we need to do is initialize it. Now, there's some manual initialization steps that we could go through. But instead, what I'm going to do is use this wrapper. Now, what this wrapper does is actually take a function and it will initialize the curses module for us and then pass kind of an initialized object directly to the function. So a little bit hard to explain without looking at it. So let's just see an example. I'm going to say define main inside of here. I'm going to say STD and then SCR like this. I'll describe what that is in a second. And for now, I'm just going to say pass. Then I'm going to say wrapper. This is a function. So I'll just call it with the two parentheses and I'm going to pass my main function like this. Notice I'm not calling the main function. I'm just putting the name of main. 
what's going to happen here is this wrapper is going to do all of the initialization for our curses module for us. It's then going to call this main function and pass the initialized kind of cursor object. If you want to call it that, this is what's called our STD screen. Now, STD stands for standard output. So we have our standard output screen. Now, standard output is just your console. So whenever you kind of print something out, you're printing it to standard output. And then this is a screen. Now, what curses does is it actually overlays a screen on top of your terminal or kind of takes control of your terminal by using a screen. So you need to draw stuff inside of the screen and then you refresh the screen as soon as you want it to refresh and show whatever you've drawn. That's kind of the general idea here. Anyways, now we have everything initialized. We didn't have to go through any real manual steps. And what I can do is start adding some stuff to the screen. So actually, the first thing that I like to do here is sorry, say STD SCR dot clear. So I want to clear this screen so that it gets rid of everything that's currently there. And then what I can do is add something to the screen for now, though. Let's just see what happens if we clear it when we run this code. All right. So now that we have all of this code, I'm going to show you how we can actually run this. Now, running this is a little bit different than the way that we normally run our Python code. We can't just click the run button or run it in IDLE or press control B, for example, if I'm here in sublime text. The reason I can't run it that way is because I need to run this in my terminal. So I can't use some fancy kind of IDE command or anything. I need to actually go inside of my command prompt or my terminal and directly run the code from there. Otherwise, we're not going to get the output that we were expecting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my command prompt here and notice that the working directory for my command prompt is the curses tutorial. Now, if you know how to get in the working directory, so you know how to use the CD command, just change your directory until you're in where your Python file is. And then what you can do is you can type Python and then the name of the file dot pi and run. It. Now, if I do this, what happens is it actually runs my code. You can see right now nothing's happening. Now, if for some reason you don't know how to get here, which is totally fine, I'm going to show you how you can change the working directory of your command prompt. So if I just open up a command prompt from scratch here, so open up a brand new one, notice that my default directory here is users slash Tim. Now, this is specific to Windows. If you're on Mac or Linux, you're going to see a squiggly line here. Anyways, the point is from here, what I need to do is navigate to where I have my file. Now, my file is stored on my desktop in a folder called curses tutorial. So I'm going to use the command CD, which stands for change directory, and I'm going to change directory to my desktop. So I'm going to go CD desktop. And the way you can auto complete this is you can type a few characters. So, you know, DES and then hit tab and it should give you the completion for where you want to go. So I'm going to go CD desktop and then I'm going to go CD and then curses tutorial like that. And now I'm in the directory that I need to be in. Now, again, if you're on Mac or Linux, it'll be slightly different. The command is the same. You can use CD and navigate to the directory that you want to make life easier for you. I would say just put your file directly on your desktop. Then all you're going to need to do if you're on Mac or if you're on Linux or Windows is just CD into the desktop and then go Python and then the name of the file. So it'd be tutorial one dot pi. Now, if you're on Mac or Linux, you might need to use the command Python three and that should be able to run it. Now, for some reason, this isn't working for you. If you're on Windows, what you can do is open up your Windows Explorer. You can navigate to where the directory is. So you can see that I actually have my curses tutorial directory open right here. You can click on this little search bar and you can type in CMD directly. So notice what I did here. I clicked here, removed everything, did CMD. And then what it does was will actually open a command prompt directly in this location. So you can see we're at curses tutorial. Now, if you're on Mac or Linux, you should be able to go to this from your finder and then just right click in here and click open in finder or sorry, open terminal. That should open a terminal again in that location. Then you can run that Python commit. Perfect. OK, so let me actually go here because I want a terminal open like this. Now, as you saw, when I ran my uh, code here, what happened was nothing. Now, the reason nothing happened is because I didn't refresh the screen. So what I actually need to do after I clear the screen is I need to say STD SCR dot and then refresh like that. So now when I do refresh, if I go back and I run this, let's go Python and then tutorial one dot pi. What actually happened here is it cleared the screen really quickly and then it restored us back to our previous terminal state. Now, the reason this is happening is because we're clearing the screen, we're refreshing it and then immediately the program is done. So since the program finishes, what happens is we go back to the previous terminal state. So we need something that's kind of going to make us wait for a second or wait for some event to occur 
before we continue. Otherwise, we're never going to see what we're actually outputting. It's just going to immediately bring us back to the previous terminal state. So we have a few options here. We could delay by a certain amount of time or we could wait for the user to hit a key. And then when they hit the key, we could exit the program. So that's the method I'm going to go with. I'm just going to put at the end of this function here, std str dot and then get. And we're going to go with ch like this. Now, this stands for get character. It will actually give you the character that a user typed in. We're going to have an entire video on this later on. But for now, what this will do is wait for the user to type something. And as soon as they type something, then we're going to immediately end the program because this function will be done. So let's go ahead into our terminal here and try this again. So actually, let me make sure I save this code and then I'm going to go to my terminal and run this. OK, so now notice when I run this, it brings me into kind of an empty screen. I have my blinking cursor here. And then as soon as I hit any key, we immediately exit. So that's what I was talking about. We just wait for us to hit a key and then boom, we will be done. OK, so now that we have looked at that, let's see how we can add some text onto the screen, because that was kind of the whole idea behind this tutorial. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear and then in between when we clear and refresh, we're going to add some text. Now, the way we add text is we do str or std str dot and then add string like this. Now, this allows us to add a string of text to the screen. So just like kind of our standard Python print statement. You'll also notice here if you try to do something like print, this is not going to work because this is a screen that's over top of the terminal. When we print, it's printing directly to the terminal. And so we're not going to see it until this kind of program is finished. You can test it out if you want. I'm just trying to say you can't really use print or input like you normally would with this module. OK, so let's continue here. We have add string. So what I'm going to do for now is very simply just add the string. Hello world. OK, so we're just going to put that in parentheses or not parentheses, sorry, in quotation marks. And then now when I go and I run my code, Notice we get hello world added to the screen as you would expect. We hit any key and then we are done. So that's great. But what if I want to place hello world somewhere specific on the screen? I don't want it just at the top left. Maybe I want it in the middle of the screen or I want it in some other location. Well, what we can actually do is we can add two arguments uh, to the beginning of this method here that tells us the row that we want to place this in and the column that we want to place this in as well. So if we go back to the terminal, Whenever we run this, let me run it here, we actually have a coordinate system. Now, the coordinate system is 0, 0 is going to be our top left hand corner, which means as we go down, our row is going to increase. So as I continue to go down the screen, my row gets larger and larger, kind of like what line I'm on. And then as we go to the right, that is going to be our column getting larger and larger. So if I want to go in the middle of the screen, I'm going to be at something like the 20th row and the 20th column or something along those lines. It'll probably be a different number than that. But you get the idea. I'm going to start zero, zero in the top left hand corner. So as I go down and to the right, I'm increasing my Y and my X or my row and my column. Anyways, let me show you here. So let's play something at 10, 10 and just see where this is actually going to be placed. OK, so let's run this and notice that we get it right here. So we've gone 10 lines down and then we've gone 10 characters from the left. And that's where we started placing this string. So you can place stuff at any coordinate that you would like that is on the screen. Awesome. OK, so let's hit enter. Let's get out of that and let's place a few more pieces of text just to kind of mess around a bit. So let's do one that's going to be at 10 and then let's go with 25 or actually let's go 1525 and let's go with Tim is great exclamation point for now. Let's run this code and notice now we have Tim is great over here. So again, just kind of one of the capabilities is we can place stuff at different locations. All right. So now that we've done that, let's see how we can actually write text over top of text that already exists. So you see that we have some text. Uh, Hello world. That's at 10, 10. Now, what happens if I try to place something else at maybe 10 and let's go with 12 and maybe we go over written like that. OK, what happens when I try to place this text? Well, let's give it a shot here. Let's run the code and notice that we have H E. And then since we place this at 12, we start writing this text over top of the previous text. So that's something that we can do. It's actually very useful that we can do this because that allows us to kind of hide text that's on the screen or override it in a different color like you saw what I was doing in uh, the demo that I gave you previously. OK. Sweet. So that is how you add text in different locations on the screen. All right. So that's pretty much all I have for this video. But I want to give you a quick teaser to what we're going to look at in the next video. And this is actually adding attributes and styling to our text. 
So for now, I'm going to get rid of overridden. And I'm just going to show you that if I do something like curses dot, and then I think I can go a underscore bold, this should actually make this text bold in my term. So let's just give this a shot. Let's go here and let's run this and notice this text is bold. This one's kind of more gray than this one. Now, something else that we could do is a underscore underline. This will be a bit easier to see. So let's go a underscore underline like that. And now if I get out of this and run this again, we have underlined text. So very, very simple example, but something that we can do. I'm going to show you all kinds of different attributes in the next video, as well as different colors. So with that said, I am going to end the video here. I hope you found this helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next Python curses tutorial. <laughs>